Many of the people you will be providing support for require assistance with personal hygiene and bathing. As a support worker, it is important that you respect the rights and dignity of the person you are assisting. It is also important to allow the person as much independence as possible and as much choice as possible during personal hygiene. Bathing is necessary to clean the skin, prevent skin breakdown, and it stimulates circulation and encourages the exercise of body parts. When assisting, you will have the opportunity to make assessments and observations about the physical and mental well-being of the client. There are many different ways to provide personal hygiene to a person. Each person's individual needs are described in their care plan, along with the level of assistance required for them. This can range from total care, in which you provide complete care to a person, or assisted care. It is important to follow the person's care plan to ensure a safe and comfortable experience for them. The first step is to determine the type of care you will provide. With a complete bed bath, you will be washing the person's entire body from head to toe. These are not commonly given, as most supported people receive regular showers or tub baths. A complete bed bath may be provided to a person who is weak from illness or surgery, unconscious or paralyzed. With a partial bed bath, also referred to as basic morning or bedtime bath, the face, armpits, hands, chest, back, and peri area are washed. This may also involve hand over hand assistance or verbal cueing to prompt and guide the person through the steps themselves. They may prefer to do this at the sink, in the bathroom, or some may be able to sit up in their bed with the basin in front of them. Privacy, the person's safety, and your safety are the next things to consider. To ensure the person's privacy, doors, windows and drapes are closed and only the care staff directly providing care should be in the room. Uncover areas of the person only as needed for the care. This will help keep them warm. Be sure the room temperature is satisfactory and that there are no drafts. All safe handling policies must be followed. Bed breaks are applied. Bed rails are always raised when you leave the side of the bed for any reason. Also, the bed must be at the proper working height. It should be between the knuckle and the hip of the caregiver. When providing care, always use routine procedures, also referred to as universal precautions. These precautions stress the importance of hand washing and the appropriate use of gloves when in contact with body fluids or mucous membranes. Also check the care plan for bathing guidelines, including whether to use soap. Always ensure that you have all the equipment and supplies at the bedside within easy reach before you begin. Some items that you may need include a wash basin, soap or some type of cleansing agent, towels, gloves and moisturizing lotion. When you're ready to wash the person, ask what temperature he or she prefers. Ensure the bathing water is not too hot or too cold by checking the temperature with the inside of your wrist. Position the person on his or her back with the bed as flat as possible but be sure to have at least one pillow under their head. Wash the person starting with the cleanest area of the body and end with the least clean area of the body. Begin with the eyes. Do not use soap for this. Place a towel over the person's chest. Make a mitt or fold the washcloth and wash around the person's eyes with water. Start at the nose and wash outwards. You do not need to be wearing gloves to do this. Wipe as many times as necessary to cleanse the eye using a different part of the cloth each time. Rinse the cloth and repeat with the other eye. Some individuals may have crusting or discharge around their eyes, in which case you may need to soak the eyes first. You are now ready to wash the rest of the face. Ask the person if they want you to use soap or not. Wash the face, forehead, neck, and ears, including the outer ears and behind the ears. Wash, rinse, and dry them well. Be sure to always pat dry. Rubbing can cause irritation 
or skin damage. It is important that we encourage the people we are supporting to be as independent as possible. The care plan will tell you how to set the person up in order for them to participate in the care. Many people will sit up in bed with the basin in front of them, or stand by the sink with the support worker standing nearby. Always give clear and concise directions to the person supported in order to facilitate the care. You can also put your hand over the supported person's hand to physically assist with the task. Once the face is washed and dried, remove the person's garments without exposing him or her unnecessarily. Using a wet, soapy cloth, wash the person's armpit and chest, starting at the far arm. Be sure to wash under the breasts on women. Expose only the areas that you are washing. and dry the armpit and under the breast well. Apply deodorant at this time if the person wears it. Repeat on the closer side. There are a number of ways to wash hands. You may be able to give the person the face cloth and have them wash their own. You may place a wash basin on the bed on a towel and have the person soak his or her hands in the water while you wash and dry the hands. You may actually wash the hands yourself with your own hands and then rinse and dry them off. Be sure to dry the hands well, especially between the fingers. Always clean the nails. Use a nail brush as needed. If the person is frail or not feeling well and you don't want to move them around too much, or if they prefer, you may do the front peri care before washing their back. When doing the peri care first, change the water and replenish your supplies before washing their back. Also, change the water anytime it becomes too cold or soapy. When replenishing your supplies, make sure the person is warm with blankets on and safe with the bed rails up. If you wash the back before starting the peri care, it is possible to use the same basin of water for the entire wash as you are adhering to the principles of washing from cleanest to least clean area. To clean the back, begin by rolling the person over away from you. Place a towel lengthwise on the bed to prevent soaking the bed. Wash, rinse and dry the back starting at the nape of the neck and working down towards the buttocks. Apply lotion at this time if directed to in the care plan. Perineal or pericare involves cleaning the genital and anal areas. These dark, warm, moist areas are ideal for the growth of microbes. Regular pericare prevents infections, odors, and promotes comfort. Allow supported persons to do their own pericare if possible. Some may need assistance and supervision with this. Be sure to use language that the person understands, as not all people will know what a perineum is. Most individuals understand what private parts are. Keep the terms tasteful and professional. Follow standard procedures or universal precautions and wear gloves while doing pericare. Work from the cleanest area to the least clean area. The urethral area is the cleanest and the anal area is the dirtiest. You do not want to cause a urinary tract infection by transferring microbes from the anal area to the urethra. When providing female peri care to an individual who needs total assistance, use peri wash or the person's preferred skin care product. Inform the person what you're about to do. Expose the perineal area only. Have her open her legs and flex them if she is able. Tuck a towel under her buttocks. Separate the labia and wash downward from front to back in one stroke, as many times as necessary, to clean the area. Be gentle as mucous membranes are delicate and easily injured. Use a separate part of the cloth for each stroke. Never wash up in the direction from the anus to the front of the body. If the woman is menstruating, you may need several cloths to wash the perineum and change the water before moving on to the anal area. Rinse 
and pat the area dry with a towel. Repeat for the groin area, suprapubic area, and inner thighs, being sure not to take any microbes back to the urethral area. Assess the peri area for redness, odors, discharge, swelling, or irritation. During all bathing care, you will be assessing the person's body for the following. Color of skin, dry skin, skin temperature, swelling of feet or hands, location and description of rashes, bruising or open areas, redness, particularly over bony prominences, drainage or bleeding from wounds or body openings, complaints of pain or discomfort. After you finish bathing the vaginal area, you are ready to bathe the rectal area. First assist the person to roll over, facing away from you. Tuck a towel under the individual. Separate the buttocks and clean the rectal area by wiping from the vagina to the anus with one stroke. Repeat this as many times as necessary using different parts of the cloth to clean the area. Remember, never wipe from the anus to the vagina. If the individual has been incontinent, you may need to use several cloths. Rinse the area well and pat dry. Assist the person to roll back over. Remove gloves, ensure the person's safety, and wash your hands before assisting them with any more care. When providing peri care to males who need total assistance, first have him lie on his back. Expose the perineal area only. Have him open and flex his legs if he is able. Tuck a towel under his buttocks. If the male is uncircumcised, you will need to grasp the penis and retract the foreskin. Wash the tip of the penis in a circular motion, starting at the urethral opening and working outwards. Repeat as many times as is necessary using a different part of the cloth. Rinse the area well and return the foreskin to its natural position. Clean the shaft of the penis with downward strokes going from the head of the penis towards the body. Clean and rinse the scrotum well. Observe the area for redness, irritation, especially in the skin folds. Wash, rinse the suprapubic, groin, and inner thigh areas well. Dry the entire area. Now that you have completed the groin area, continue washing the rectal area. Assist the person to roll over facing away from you. Tuck a towel under the individual. Separate the buttock and clean the rectal area by wiping from the scrotum to the anus with one stroke. Repeat this as many times as necessary using different parts of the cloth to clean the area. Remember, never wipe from the anus to the scrotum. If the individual has been incontinent, it may be necessary to use several cloths. Rinse the area well and pat dry. Assist the person to roll back. When peri care is completed, separate the soiled towels and linens according to the policies at your workplace. Empty and wash the basin.
Many people enjoy a tub bath, others prefer showers. Safety is very important when assisting someone with a tub bath or a shower. Possible risks are falls or scalds from hot water. You will only give a tub bath or a shower if it is written in the care plan. Training will be provided at your worksite for the use of specialized mechanical tubs. Do not operate a specialized mechanical tub until you have been properly trained in its use. Safety guidelines to consider when assisting persons with tub baths or showers include knowing what temperature to use, ensuring that the tub or shower stall has been properly cleaned before and after use, drying the bathroom or shower floor to prevent slips, using a bath mat on the tub or shower floor, placing needed items within reach, having the person use the appropriate grab or safety bars when transferring in or out of the tub or shower, not the towel rail, and using good body mechanics when transferring a supported person in or out of the shower or tub. In addition, you must remember to protect the person's right to privacy by closing the doors and windows and using the shower curtain if necessary. Remember, always allow the individual to be as independent as possible. The care plan will guide you by informing you of how much assistance the person requires and if indicated, how to transfer them. For a person to be seated comfortably and safely throughout a shower, you may be required to assist the person into a shower chair. Some people use a regular bathtub for bathing. If this is the case, you may need to use a transfer board to assist them into the tub. When assisting a person with a weak side into the bathtub, be sure that he or she gets into the tub with the weak side leading. Although it is usual for a person with a weak side to lead with the strong side, in the case of bathtubs, the opposite is true. After a bath, a person may feel tired or weak and will need to use his or her strong side to lead when getting out of the tub. This ensures the person's safety. Help the person dry off after the bath. With females, dry under the breasts first. With all persons, continue with the skin folds, then the perineal area and between the toes. Help the person to dress and put on footwear. Assist the person to return to their room if needed. Many women shave their legs and underarms. Legs and underarms are shaved after bathing when the skin is soft. Use soap or shaving cream for lather. Follow routine procedures or universal precautions and wear gloves when shaving a person. Follow the care plan for the type of razor used. First, collect shaving items and bathing items as needed. Hold the skin taut and shave downwards. Do not rinse off the razor in the bath water. Instead, use a basin or some other kind of container. Rinse off the area completely. When finished, remove gloves and wash hands. When shaving legs, shave up from the ankles. This is against the hair growth. Apply direct pressure to any nicks or cuts and report nicks, cuts, or irritation to the appropriate person. A blade razor or an electric razor will be used according to the person's care plan. Before shaving, you will first wash a person's face. Apply a warm, damp towel or face cloth to the face to prepare for the shave. Hold the skin taut with one hand. Shave in the direction of hair growth and use shorter strokes around the chin and lips. Rinse the razor often and shake off excess water and lather. Wash off remaining shaving cream and dry face and neck with a towel. Remove your gloves and wash your hands. When shaving with an electric razor, make sure the face is dry. Do not use shaving cream or a warm cloth. You may need to wear gloves. Refer to the care plan for guidelines. Hold the skin taut with one hand, turn on the razor and place it over the hair growth. 
move the razor back and forth or use a circular pattern. Once completed, apply aftershave lotion if requested or if directed by the care plan. When doing any personal care, always adhere to the principle of washing from the cleanest area to the least clean and always allow the individual to be as independent as possible by following the guidelines in their care plan.